Hello and welcome to the K&K Sports Podcast. I'm Jake. I'm Billy. And today we're going to be talking about the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. Yeah, in 2021. We're or 2021 <laughs> Tokyo Olympics. I don't know. I don't. That that seems to be a good area to start off, Billy. Uh, we all know for obvious reasons why the Tokyo Olympics got uh canceled or postponed this uh for this Olympic cycle because of COVID. So how do you think the postponement not only affected the athletes for the Team USA athletes, but for everybody else involved in the Olympics? Uh, you know, I think it, like, really affected a lot of people's training. You know what I mean? They went from, you know, being able to go outside every day to having to stay in, you know, quarantine and stuff like that. Especially if you got COVID, though, too. You know, you would have to stay at home, you know, for week for, like, weeks just to kind of recover and just so, you know, you, you don't spread it to everyone else. Right. So I think, you know, the training definitely um, would be more different this year than past years. Um, but in the end, you know, I think all these athletes were definitely prepared for all their events. Um, regardless. So you were talking about athletes getting prepared and one of the athletes that were that was greatly affected by um, the postponement as well as her own mental health and was a big storyline throughout the past two weeks at these Olympics were Simone Biles and her, uh, I guess you'd say, uh, refusal to compete in the majority of her events that she qualified for and said it was due um, not only because she wasn't performing to the best of her ability um, as many believe she is the best gymnast to ever grace this country but she also contributed to mental health and the aspect of how COVID affected these Olympics games, for example, like not having any family or friends or support in the stands. Uh, So what is your... And uh, Simone Biles was not the only... uh, or is not the only athlete to express uh, their uh, problems with mental health in the public eye. Uh, Michael Phelps did that as well. One of the best swimmers of all time. So, Billy, what's your opinion on Simone Biles and everything that went down with that situation? Look, there's no doubt in my mind that Simone Biles is either the greatest um, or, you know, whoever she is, like, she's the greatest gymnast of all time. Right. But, you know, I, I completely understand where she's coming from, where she, you know, she's not mentally there. And, it, you know, what she's doing is pretty dangerous with the stunts that she's doing. But, you know, you can't be out here calling yourself the GOAT, the greatest of all time, and then, you know, just kind of saying, you know, just kind of quitting pretty much. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, um, you know, I, I completely understand that, you know, especially for gymnastics, at least, you know, with the stunts you're going to do, you know, you want to be mentally and physically prepared for it. And, you know, maybe she just she wasn't mentally there. But I mean, at the same time, you know, she shouldn't I feel like she shouldn't have quit on her teammates like that. Um, and just the fact that she's getting so much media attention is just for me, it's kind of annoying, I guess, because, you know, she's, you know, like they're making it seem like she's the only one that's going through it. And, you know, I don't see, you know, other people who go through it. Like, you know, like Michael Phelps. I didn't see such a huge, you know, story and stuff like that on how he went through it. Until after his career, he kind of opened up about it. And I completely understand. But, you know, it wasn't really as covered as this is. So, you know, it's kind of, I just kind of think it's like a double standard that, you know, it's almost like, you know, women are the only ones that are supposed to kind of go through stuff like that. And it's okay. 
I so. I understand where you're coming from, but you also have to realize that some like I said, Simone Biles was not really performing to the best of her ability and didn't want to put her team at risk. And I also think it's good because it gave the the younger gymnasts some experience, uh, such as uh, Suni Lee, who uh, won the all-around gold medal during the uh, team all-around competition. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, like I said, they she's the greatest of all time, but, you know, you can't just sit there and, and talk and say that you're the greatest of all time and then just completely quit out on your team that's just what i'm you know getting out of this and you know all other athletes they go through this you know all the time you know like, like you were saying she's not the only one that that's going through this there's other athletes in different sports who go through it but you know even if you know her parents weren't there it's not an excuse to just completely quit out on your team because like think of it like this right if you know tom brady lebron james all these other athletes, if they're quitting, you know, with LeBron game seven, it's a game seven and LeBron just says he's not out of it. How much, uh, you know, he's going to get a lot of, you know, hate from that. And even Tom Brady, if he's in the, if he was in the Super Bowl and he said, yeah, you know, I'm just, I'm not really mentally there. I'm not really mentally fit. He's going to get a lot of hate. So I'm just, you know, look, like I said, good for her. She came out. That's her thing. But at the same time, I just think that it's not really getting the coverage for as for other athletes as it is for, you know, just like her. Everybody else, so. yeah. I completely understand where you're coming from. Um, another Olim- uh, Olympic uh, sport for Team USA that garnered a lot of attention were the Olympics uh, 2020, uh, 2021. Uh, men's basketball team headlined by Brooklyn's own uh, Kevin Durant leading uh, the uh, U.S. Olympic men's team to their fourth straight gold medal. Billy, what do you have to say regarding that? I'm just glad they won, to be honest with you. Like, it would just be, like, really, you know, surprising if the men's team didn't win. You know, like it's 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 all superstars going up against. You know, I mean, like some superstars on different national teams. Right. But I mean, let's be honest; it's a whole squad full of them. Yes. Full of all stars and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just I'm glad, you know, because I'm I'm sure that they would get a lot of heat if they didn't win gold, considering they lost to uh, you know Nigeria. Not that I'm saying Nigeria is a bad team, but I'm just saying you know it's like you know basketball is yeah. supposed to be our sport, and you know when there's like you know five-time, ten-time All-Stars going out there and, you know, not really playing that well. It's it's kind of concerning. But, you know, in the end, you know, we, we came out with the gold. So Absolutely. Um, one thing that I found interesting is Kevin Durant's standout performance. Not, on, not, on, not that he does not stand out on the court every, every, every time – he touches the ball, but what I found interesting was the fact that he recently, or Sean Marks in the Brooklyn Nets front office, just signed him to a two hundred uh, million dollar extension or one hundred ninety eight million dollar extension, and I feel that his performance during the gold medal game uh, really showed the Brooklyn. Nets front office and really prove to their fans why he's deserving of such a big contract. Well, KD is just KD. He's, the, I mean, I'm going to just throw it out there. I think he's the best player in the league, like number one. I, I, I personally think he's the number one. He's got everything. He's got the shooting. He's able to play defense well. And, you know, he's just a great team player. Now, you know, I'm a big Giannis guy. I love Giannis, but he's at least – he's top three definitely. But I'm just saying – KD is deserves all the money that's thrown at him, regardless of. I, I mean, I look, he's gonna get paid like he's the best player in the league, and I mean, he is. I I really do think he is. I think he's better than LeBron. Um, and you know, like like Jake said, with the, his performance 
in the in the Olympics. I think he's the best Olympics player because he's the only player. I just read like a um, couple hours ago that he was the only player ever on the U.S. Uh, Olympic team to average 20 points in the Olympics. Wow. So that's crazy. I mean, it's not really crazy for KD, but for the Olympic standpoint, yes, it's crazy. Yeah, they got a lot of uh, they got a lot of uh, good pu- uh, publicity on everybody's favorite news platform in Twitter. Uh, such as uh, congratulations from uh LeBron James himself, who did, who surprisingly didn't declare for the United States Olympic team, uh, Patrick Beverly, Bradley Beal, and the Chicago Bulls, as well as the, as well as the uh, FIBA organization, who handles the rulings for the international play for the sport of men's basketball so billy what do you have to say regarding that i think it's kind of crazy how the uh how the the men's team has has won in 2008 to 2012 2016 and 2020 the past four olympics i mean it's probably what, what is it past six uh men's olympics for basketball yeah they win every year pretty much that's just, that's just kind of crazy to me i think that's you know, that's something to brag about. It's four consecutive uh, gold medals for the U.S. men with a 87 to 82 win against the country of France, which I got to give it to them, Billy. With guys like Evan Fournier and Rudy Gobert, their their team is no slouches either. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that, definitely. Rudy Gobert is... Probably one of the best centers, if not the best center in the league. Ah, uh, nah, second best. Nikola Jokic is the Joker. He was the MVP yeah, for he, a he reason. Was, he was the MVP. Yeah. Um. So. so Billy, what was the number one thing that you took away from Team USA's performance at these Olympic games? I mean, overall, I think they did pretty fine. Um, I mean, like I said, just losing to just losing to Nigeria and you know France in the uh, exhibition games didn't really look so promising for us at first. But you know, like I said, like I told before, uh, I'm very happy that we won gold because uh, if we didn't, then it would really look bad for our country. I feel like, um, especially since you know we're sending how many all stars to. Um, to Tokyo to play against these, you know, players who play in like Japan and you know, just not really like the main main NBA, not the main league. So yeah, absolutely. And as the Olympics are coming to a close on August eighth, which I believe is at the end of this week, and if I'm not mistaken, um. The United States of America is uh, currently in second in the uh, Olympic medal count, not a surprise, with 36 gold medals, 39 silver medals, and 33 33, uh, bronze medals, with a total of 108 medals. Yeah, so they're two off of uh, China, so that's that's pretty good, you know. Yeah. How many events are left? Do we know? Um, I don't, I don't quite know, but I could search up the schedule. Um, I'm sure like track is still going on. Yeah, so. track started later, so. Um. I mean, yeah, usually I wouldn't be really good. I wouldn't track. be surprised. Yeah, so honestly, I think we're we are definitely on track to having the most golds in this Olympics. Definitely, I think we definitely are. Um, Billy, we all know that there are several Olympic sports that are pretty much out there, such as weightlifting. I saw the other day. Um, wrestling. Wrestling. 
a water diving polo. water polo. <laughs> handball. So, <laughs> handball. You know, it's funny. I didn't even know handball was an Olympic sport until uh, last week. That's crazy. That That is crazy to me. But yeah. what do you think is the most out of um, the ordinary Olympic sport? Most out of the, probably handball. How do you, why do you think that? Because I just, you know, like when you think of handball, it's something that you play in like gym class or something like that. That's, yeah. just, that's what I think. I don't think of it as an, I mean, it is an Olympic sport, but I just never knew it was an Olympic sport. Now I want to try out for the <laughs> United States team. Yeah. Um, I feel like that'd just be the easiest sport. Not, not, not to play the goalie, though. The goalie would. That, that would, that would yeah, be, that would not be water polo is very interesting though. They have uh, pretty talented college athletes uh, going for it as well. Yeah, like my uh, home home nation Greece, they're in the finals against Serbia in the water polo. So gotta tune into that tomorrow. What time is uh, that? I have no idea. I mean, you you know you know how it is with like you know Tokyo. They're like eleven hours. Ahead or behind. yeah, so I feel like for that reason there were a lot of uh sporting um sporting events that uh people were already reporting on, with the exception of the gold medal game for uh um basketball last night. Um, I think most. Uh, sport athlete uh, or sport uh, platforms were already uh, reporting on the results of the Olympics when they didn't even um, play on TV. Play on TV yeah. yet? Because, like I said, like when we're sleeping, that's when they're playing, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. Think, so. Um. Well, luckily for us, uh, the Olymp. The Olympics in 2024 will be in Paris, I believe. But in 2028, the Olympics will be on our home soil in the uh, city of Los Angeles. So they'll only be three hours behind. So that'll be easier to catch up. I'm surprised it didn't happen in New York or something. Hopefully. Yeah. Um, let's, I'm going to pull up the Olympic schedule here and see what else is on, else is on the, um, docket for the rest of the weekend. Um, do they finish all the swimming stuff? Here, yeah, they did. And what do you think about Caleb Dressel? Yeah, you set a world uh, record. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, good for him. You know, he deserves it. He put in the hard work during a tough time, and he uh, managed to break a U.S. record. So, and uh, what is it? And is it an Olympic record? Yeah. Yeah. So both. But he, along with uh, Katie Ledecky on the women's side, uh, came out on top for. The Olympics in the swimming arena. I actually think Michael Phelps was the um analyst for for these one for these Olympics. Yeah. Um. And as far as like the soccer though, too, they had you know Brazil won gold for the men's and yeah. Uh, you know, the United States came in third place. What do you think about that? A team that's usually so dominant on the women's side for the you know US I, came in. What I think is that Megan Rapino just I I respect Megan Rapino. I love her as a player, but you know, she's just she talks so much. That's the problem. Yeah. She was talking a lot of smack saying Canada's this, Canada's that. And instead of you know, letting your actions do your talking. Yeah. It was quite the opposite. Her talking was doing, uh, you know, um, even though they didn't even do anything anyway. I mean, they lost. Yeah, but so. um, that just goes to show that anything could happen. And 
one one moment could change the tra- trajectory of a whole tournament. Yeah. Because everybody thought, uh, as they did in Rio, I believe, they would come out with gold again in Tokyo. Mm-hmm. And they only came away with bronze. Yep. So here are the last few events for um, these Olympic Games. Uh, the women's, uh, on the women's side for the basketball with ironically Megan Rapino's partner, Sue Bird and Diana Tarazi, um, they will play the host nation of Japan tonight at 1030, uh, for another gold. So hopefully we will be able to take gold in the sport of basketball on for both genders. Um, what's your opinion going into that game, Billy? Uh, I think, you know, the me- the women's team is will be very dominant. I mean, you know, like you said, they got Sue Bird. Um, but to be honest with you, I'm not really so – I don't really know much about the women's uh, national team. Right. I just know that they're, pr- that they're just good. So, you know, I mean, with like the WNBA, those players are really dominant in that way. Yeah, so. um, they have a lot of young talent too. I think a lot of people out of uh, UConn and Gina Oriema staff. Yeah. Um, so I think they'll uh like they always do come out on top with the gold medal. Hopefully, mm-hmm. for the U.S. Yeah. Um, the men's marathon final is today at six p.m. Um for uh running and then to decide the uh what uh championship for the women's tournament in volleyball um brazil will be taking on the united states um both te- uh both countries are known for volleyball because brazil has a lot of uh, beaches and um, Brazil has a lot of beaches and um, the United States um, has a lot of uh, great um, legacy when it comes to um, volleyball with uh, April Ross and uh, Walsh Jennings and Misty May Trainer, so that's going to be a good match. And in water polo, to determine the uh, fifth and sixth place teams, or Croatia will be playing the United States. So, Billy, who do you think is going to win that? Um, I mean, I'm not really too sure how good those teams are. At this sport, so I mean, I'm just gonna support the United States. That's just you know what it is. So um, let's uh, move on to. Then you got boxing, the men's super heavyweight. Um, you got the uh, men's lightweight. It's you know someone from the United States, and then someone from I believe. What? what um. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Hold on. I think that's Cuba, actually, for the uh, final bout for the men's yeah, yeah, yeah. white, uh, lightweight, excuse me. Uh, lightweight match. Yeah, and then you got the women's uh, bicycle race. Yeah. Um, and then I'm not really sure what the – it's more gymnastics, pretty much. Um, I believe so. that's actually rhythmic gymnastics. <laughs> Yeah. I have no idea what that yeah, entails, yeah. but <laughs> and then we got the women's track cycling, the sprint. It's a race for fifth and to eighth place. Then you got the handball, like I just mentioned. Um, with that being at two o'clock in the morning, it will be uh, France. Um, it's actually the women's too. It's a gold medal match. So tomorrow morning. Uh, but Russia and France will be in that. 
competition, and we'll see what happens with that. Um, so, yeah, as of right now, the um, United States seem to... Uh, uh, seem to at least be on the podium for the overall success in the Olympic game with uh, 36 gold medals as of now um, and 108 overall medals. Um, so it seems to be an exciting finish um, to the uh, Olympic Games, huh, Billy? Yeah, I like like I said, I, I think that they will definitely catch up to China. I definitely see the United States catch up to China. It's only by two, and they've got a lot of sports that they can definitely uh, win gold in. Uh, so now let's to finish up here, since uh, this is a sport we know a little bit more about. Why don't we dive into a little bit more of the uh, Olympic? Uh, men's basketball by wrapping up the uh, USA versus uh, France um, men's tournament gold medal game. Um, the United States uh, beat France 87 to 82 um, with. Um, a stellar uh, performance by the United States, although um, they they did uh, they did not start out well from the three point line uh, because uh, I believe they started um, uh, oh from eight until. Uh, Kevin Durant really um, uh, propelled the team and got them going from that line, but I believe that first uh, field goal from beyond the arc was with two and a half uh, minutes to go in the first quarter. And... um, Sorry for the little bit of delay with getting yeah, Kevin, stats Kev, here. Kevin Durant dropped 29. That's crazy. And then uh, Lillard dropped 11. Holiday dropped 11. Uh, Booker dropped 2. Uh, Adebayo dropped 6. Jason Tatum dropped 19 off the bench. Middleton had 4. Uh, Draymond Green had 0. Uh, and then Zach Levine had five points. So overall, I would say a very good performance by the uh, United States national team. Uh, and Gobert, and you know, going over the France, Gobert dropped sixteen. Uh, Fournier dropped sixteen also. Fournier, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> uh, Decolo, uh, whatever you pronounce his name, he dropped uh, twelve. So, I mean, I would say overall they played pretty well, too. But Frank, Kevin, Kevin Durant is definitely the MVP. Frank Nidalikina and uh, Timothy uh, or Timothy uh, Luawu Cabarro, the, who play for the New York Knicks and New York, uh, or sorry, the Brooklyn Nets, um, respectively, both dropped. 11 points for Nidalikina and 22 points for the, or I'm sorry, that's the minutes column. So they both played 11 and 22 minutes respectively. Um, so they should also be proud of their efforts. Not So I'm not trying to dismiss the good work that they've done. Um. Billy, um, now that, now that, um, the Olympics are over, what do you think, uh, Team USA and the basketball team in particular learned from this experience? Um, that I think that, you know, just because you're the best players in the world 
just because you're the best team in the world doesn't mean you're going to win every single time. So I think that's like one of the lessons that they learned. Um, but I mean, look, overall, I think all the players played phenomenal. Um, you know, like guys like Luka Doncic, like they're getting new deals now because of the Olympics. Yeah, for so, so for Slovenia, I believe. I don't know if it's for their country's history or um, Olympic history. I believe his country, Slovenia, and for either one of those two um, organizations, either. Slovenia's uh, basketball team or the Olympics, um, but either either way that that's an accomplishment that should be noted. I believe they got his first. Uh, he got his first triple double. Uh, in Olympics history, and I believe um, this is a topic for another episode, but. Um, I believe that performance will translate for what he does back for us when he reports to Mavericks. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's supposed to sign a super max deal. so I wouldn't he, be surprised. Don, Luka Doncic deserves a lot, you know, the money that he's given anyway. So, so I think that's all we have for today. Um, um, so, yeah, it's been a great Olympic Games and... It's been another great episode with my buddy Billy here. Thanks for being here. Um, And um, thanks for joining us. Uh, This has been the K&K Sports Podcast Olympic Recap. I'm Jake. I'm Billy. And we'll catch you guys on the flip side.